Hi friends, teacher Kitty here from the Hands-On Children's Museum and welcome to Tea Time with Teacher Kitty. Today I have my great-grandmother's tea box, so special, fancy. And I also have a very special teacup that I got when I was traveling in Malaysia. So the thing about tea time, you don't really have to have tea. Like you can have juice or milk or water like I'm having today. It's a warm lemon water. I really enjoy it. So this is gonna be a series of, um, of conversations about tea and an opportunity for us to get together and we'll have snacks and recipes and lots of different things about tea. I hope you'll join me. So let's get started. I have a little story for you today. And it's, it's about the history of tea. So tea was discovered 4,700 years ago. What? That's such a long time ago by a Chinese emperor named Xin Neng. When some tea leaves blew into his hot water, and they had an opportunity to just sit and steep. That means hot water made those tea leaves nice and soft, and the flavors started coming out into the water. So people used to drink tea out of small bowls like this one without handles. And they used two hands, and they would just drink like they were drinking a, a bowl of soup. Mmm. It was really important for the flavor of the tea to taste so delicious. It wasn't really about having a lot of tea and to quench your thirst. Nope. Tea was a great time for people to get together to talk about their problems or share ideas or plan events or just socialize like we're doing right now. So let's Tea actually comes from mountainsides and they grow on a bushy plant and the leaves are harvested and they look like this. And after they're harvested, that means cut or picked, um, they're dried like this. And they dry, you used to dry them in the sun and they would wait and then they would bag them up and uh, save them for later. Sometimes we like to add dried flowers or fruit to tea, like this. What do you see in those pictures? I see some apples, some cherries, maybe a little orange. I see some rose petals, some lavender, maybe some rosemary or lemon. Sometimes they would uh, do the rinds of, of lemons or fruits or grapefruits citrus fruits, so that um, that would change the flavor of the tea. Today, we can buy tea loose, like, like this on the, on the left side. You can see some cherries and apples in there. Or we buy them in little tea bags like that. Maybe sometimes you'll see a, a friend, an adult person, putting a tea bag in and sometimes has a little string with a little tail on the end. So you can this your hot tea bag out of your cup. So we add hot water to the tea leaves and we allow them to steep. Now remember steep, not like steep, like a mountain is steep, but steep is used as a verb and it means to soak in water to extract the flavor or soften it. So <clears throat> oftentimes you could see here looks like they poured some water into the cup and they've also got a little sugar or a little lemon that they might add to their tea. I like this little tea cup here also. It doesn't have any handles. You see it's got a little plate under the cup. We'll talk about that in just a minute. The longer that the tea leaves sit in the hot water, the longer and the stronger the flavor of the tea. So another thing that they used to do a long time ago was make these tea 
bricks. It was a way to preserve the tea leaves for an even longer period of time. Um, and then you can see they're like little squares and they would just break them off, kind of like chocolate, right? And just they used to put them in a little a little plate. They didn't have cups. They used to have a little plate like this one, and it has just a little bit of a lip on it. And then they would just add a little bit of hot water. Now, the reason why we had just a little one like this is because it's so hot. You want it to be open so it cools off a little bit. And you can drink it just like, like what we were talking about before. It's like a little, like a little bowl, but not as deep, right? So many, 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 many years later, we we discovered teacups. Okay, so that was that's been in China since about 220 AD, and um, it was very common in other parts of the world, mostly only Asia, Asian countries. Um, and then it finally arrived in Europe in about uh, in the 1600s. So um, it was also sipped in small bowls like this, but then uh, the people in Europe decided that they wanted a fancy little tiny handle on their cup, right? And some teacups had little, like, like fancy ornate little pedestals. You can see here uh, in the upper right hand corner, there are pictures of teacups stacked on top of each other. And it's like they have a little stem at the bottom, a little pedestal. So it was like its own little table. And uh, and they would have a little saucer underneath, like that. So here's a couple of great examples of teacups. So holding the teacup is, is different in different countries too. So you can see some people are holding the cup under a little, a little platter, a little plate like this, using their whole hand. Sometimes people use two hands like this. Sometimes people hold it like this. Sometimes just by the little handle like this. Sometimes people get fancy and they want to put a pinky out. Can you do that? That's kind of silly, isn't it? Yeah, people all around the world drink tea. So what about those saucers? Hmm? So I mean, here's another, again, that's the little plate that is, uh, underneath your teacup. So a long time ago, we, um, we didn't have big living rooms like we do now. And uh, the, they just, you would walk in and you'd be in a room and then you'd have your table and your kitchen and a bedroom. And that's kind of it, we'd, we'd lived in smaller homes. Um, and so tea used to be wheeled out on a cart it looks like this. It's like a little table that you push forward and it's got some wheels on it. And on, on the sides, the table edges would lift up, become kind of an instant table. The people who were hosting the tea party would have their teapot and cups and saucers and maybe some snacks. There's nothing better than snacks at a tea party, I'll tell you. So we had people and they just sat around in chairs and and they didn't have a big table and so the saucer was kind of like a little table for people's teacups and there's just a tiny bit of room on the edge for a tiny little snack that's the thing about tea time it's like it's like fancy snack time and so there's only room for tiny little finger foods. People didn't have plates and forks. I mean, they did, but not at tea time. Tea time was like just finger foods time. So just a little visit and a little tea and a little snack. It's kind of a, like I said, like a short snack time, right? So here are some more pictures of tea tables. Sometimes people would have big fancy tea parties. And today people have big fancy tea parties to celebrate sometimes a new baby or someone getting married or a birthday. And this might be what it looks like. You can see down below there, uh, the cart, there are 
teacups and saucers and fancy cakes. Here on the picture on the right, uh, they have tiered uh, tea table, like little platter platforms. And people shared a special fancy tea cakes and crackers and sandwiches. And, and when we meet again, Teacher Kitty's going to share some great recipes that you can make at home, too. All right, so that's all we have to say today about tea time today. So remember, if you're gonna have some tea time at your home, please make sure that you've got an adult with you that can help supervise, especially with hot water, okay? We'll see you again next time. And be sure to visit us on Hands On To You Home Videos. Thanks so much, my friends. Teacher Kitty saying bye-bye.